This tutorial covers how to add rhinestones to a vector path using the EasyGem software. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is pull up a blank page here and I'm going to use my Bezier tool just to go ahead and give ourselves a vector path here and then I'm going to click on rhinestone outline. So you'll see this adds rhinestones right along my vector path. Now, um, in order to adjust these, we want to go ahead and pull up our sidebar by clicking on this Show Gem Object Properties. That brings up our sidebar where it actually shows us how to adjust these stones. And so I'm going to come in here just a little bit so we can see. So right now I have this. It's set at stone size 10, which is 3.3 millimeters. I can change that by selecting from my drop-down menu. It will adjust that. So I just choose a different size, hit Apply and it adjusts that. I can also manually type in millimeters what I want this to be. So if I type in 3.6 and hit apply, it does that automatically for me too. Um, just a note, you will want to make the, these are like the vector holes that your machine will be cutting. Those, these holes need to be 0.5 millimeters larger than your stone. So a stone size 12 is 3.1 millimeters, so I want to type in 3.6 millimeters in this program. And so then you'll see down here too I have my spacing. Um, right now it's at 0.5 millimeters. I can type whatever I want to in there and hit apply and see it will adjust that accordingly. Um, let me get close here on this. This is where my ends count. So I'm right here. You'll notice my vector path right now. The ends are set at edge. So my rhinestones start at the edge of my vector path. If I choose centered and hit apply, it changes it so my rhinestones start at the center of my vector path and continue on from that way. So that's the difference between that. You'll notice here is also where it shows us the rhinestone count for whatever you have selected. So this is the piece we have selected right now. It lets me know there's 86 stones on here. I cannot like manually type in a stone count and hit apply. Um, it will only be adjusted as you change your actual stone uh, properties here. So see now it changed that way. And so that is um, how that works. I'm going to go ahead and put this back to edge. Um, and then you'll also notice that while I am using this tool that down here is where we have um, an additional toolbar. This is where we actually can come in here and start tweaking stones separately. Go ahead and I want to get there. We go. That's what I'm looking for. This right here is our uh, an overlapping gem. When they are outlined in red like this, it's showing us that there's an overlapping gem problem. There's a couple ways that I can get rid of this. Um, I have this tool up here. This is our remove overlapping rhinestones. If I click that, it will just automatically remove any overlapping rhinestones I have. There is an important thing that you need to know about this. This only works on overlapping stones within one vector line. So I'm going to put two vector lines side by side just to show you. See if I overlap these two it does not recognize this overlapping stone. So those you will visually need to see. So if I click this button it doesn't solve this problem because these are two separate vector paths. It will only remove the ones within the same vector path like it took those out. So that's just something to be mindful of that um, even if you select the remove overlapping rhinestone tools you'll still want to make sure to manually go through and make sure that you don't have any overlapping stones between your different vector paths. Um, but that did quite nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply this again because I want to bring that stone back actually to show you how else we could do this. So that's if uh, a one touch button to get rid of overlapping stones. If I want to come in here and manually tweak these, I have this option right here. This is my rhinestones tool. It's the stone with the pencil. This allows it so that I can actually take individual stones and move them around. Um, if I hold down my shift key, it gives me a minus sign where I can actually delete them. So I can like manually delete those red ones like that way. Um, if I I'm moving a stone and I hold down my control key, it will move it along the vector path. So if that is important to me, I can do that. Um, if I don't have any key held down, um, I am automatically given a plus sign. That's so that I can add stones. So if I wanted to add stones, I can do that. Um, 
I can kind of add stones wherever I want to, but since I am currently selected on this shape and I'm adding them using the rhinestones tool, this is still considered, these like floaters out here are still considered part of this vector path. So you'll notice that if I come over here and change the colors, it will change those as well because this is all considered one. Um, it's very important to note though that I will not want to start adjusting my stones manually using the rhinestone tools until I have everything here the way I want to. If I want to come in here and change any of these properties, when I hit apply, it will resort back to these standards. So um, if you'll notice right now, if I hit apply, it sets everything back to this standard. So I do not start adjusting my stones manually until I have my stone size, spacing, and edge how I want it. So that's very important. Um, another way that we can adjust these um, is where we can use our rhinestones corner tool. This is actually my favorite tool. You'll notice right now we have like these perfect sharp corners in our design, but the stones aren't they're not reflecting that very well. And we have this overlapping stone over here. This tool, let me zoom in here. This tool is going to allow us to set a stone spot and make everything adjust. So if I'm selected on my rhinestone path right now, I'm going to go ahead and click the rhinestones corner tool. It allows me to set an anchor by clicking on it. It adds this little yellow dot. Um, this is basically an anchor where I am telling the, the software that I, I want a stone on this corner, you adjust accordingly. So if I go ahead then and click on my uh, pick tool, you'll see how it put a stone there and it adjusts things um, uh, to match that. I still, of course, have this overlapping stone. Unfortunately, this is where I can actually come in here and then manually adjust it a little bit. And if I hold down my control key, then it will be right along my path. So that way I don't have any more overlapping there. Um, although now that I did that, you'll see it's probably going to tweak it again. So right here you'll notice I don't have a perfect corner. I want to go ahead and add another anchor to that. But you'll notice that I can't see where my corner is because it's hidden under a rhinestone. That is where I will use this tool. This is our show rhinestones. This shows and hides the rhinestones. So if I need to see underneath the rhinestones, I click on this, the rhinestones are still there, I just they're just hidden for a moment. So this allows me then to come in and add my perfect corner, and let me sh show them again. And then if I once I hit my pick tool, it will adjust it. And you'll notice because it adjusted it back to the standards, so now we do have to deal with that again. So let me go ahead and set my final anchor here, and then we'll go ahead and go back and manually adjust that. Another thing real quick, this button right here is our artwork tool. This will actually strip the stone properties of a vector, so convert it from a rhinestone path to just a vector path. So this is just showing and hiding the rhinestones. This actually will strip the rhinestone properties from a vector path. So that's only if you want to actually take away the rhinestones altogether. So those are the difference between those two. But I'm just going to go ahead and hide the rhinestones for a second. I'm going to add an anchor onto that corner again and hit my pick tool. It adjusts it and then I will come down here and using my rhinestones tool, I am going to go ahead and hold down my control key and manually kind of adjust those. So there we go. So now I have a perfect corners on my rhinestone path here and so that is how you can tweak things using the rhinestone, all your rhinestone tools down here.